Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and in this discussion about 3D printing, let's talk about the breadth of technologies that fall under the umbrella of 3D printing. As mentioned in our previous discussion, 3D printing describes a wide array of different technologies that are all similar, but do it in a different way. So let's go over the different types of technologies that are out there. Now my friends over at 3D Hubs have made a fantastic infographic describing in detail these various technologies and I'm going to use their notes just a little bit as we go through this discussion. So let's start our discussion with VAT polymerization. VAT polymerization was the first 3D printing process created and it describes a process where you have a vat of liquid that turns solid when exposed to UV light and then exposing that to UV light in selective ways and then pulling that print out and changing the light layer by layer to make sure that you create each layer of your object as you pull it out. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this but they all fall under that same basic idea and they're used by a couple of different companies. VAT photopolymerization allows for super high detailed models that are absolutely beautiful. However, it does have a couple of disadvantages. First of all, you can only use a single type of material in VAT polymerization. Of course, these UV curing polymers are sometimes a little bit hard to work with and can be a little bit toxic. So do try to use caution around them. Also, these 3D printers tend to be a little bit expensive and the material for them also tends to be on the expensive side. There is also some common knowledge that these materials continue to cure, so the prints that you get from there, if you continue to expose them to light, will change and eventually break down. However, I have a print from one of these printers. Uh, it, it's super high detail. It's a little ring and I've had it for a while and I've never seen it change over time. So while this may be true, I haven't seen evidence of it. The next 3D printing technology that we're going to talk about is FDM or FFF 3D printing. They're both the exact same process. Now this is probably the most ubiquitous 3D printing technology that's out there. It's the one that you're probably going to have in your home if you have 3D printing in your home. It's actually probably the one that'll be in your business because it's a very mature technology and there have been companies that for years have figured out how to use this technology in extremely good ways. The high-end machines are amazing with it. You can use a variety of materials, many of which are very cheap in FFF 3D printing. Some FFF 3D printers even have the ability to print in more than one material, which means that, again, if you have support, which is something that you have to worry about, most 3D printers, most FFF 3D printers with only one nozzle have to build those supports out of the same material, but they don't all have that limitation. With multiple materials going in, you could build your supports out of a different material than your build material, and when they when you're done printing, they'll separate cleanly with high detail results. Some of those materials are even water soluble. There's always new materials coming into FFF 3D printing and always new advances coming in. It's one of the most rapidly advancing 3D printing technologies that's out there. Overall, FFF 3D printing super cool and it's the one that you'll probably get to see the most, but it's not the only technology out there. There's also material jetting. This is where a head, like on your inkjet printer, squirts out a material that's liquid, but that can be made solid afterwards. It might be that UV curing stuff. It might be heat cured. It might be some other technology behind it, but it's brought out as a liquid and then turned into a solid almost immediately afterward. And as opposed to being pulled up out of a vat, a reservoir of material, it's deposited layer by layer on what you're doing. Now, some of these technologies are super cool, and the people who are doing them are doing some amazing things. For instance, they'll have multiple heads on there, just like you can with your inkjet printer, that print out a rigid material and a, a flexible material, and then that print out another material that's water-soluble afterwards so that it will just dissolve away. And with this, they'll build something that's partially rigid and partially 
uh, uh, flexible that have great supports that disappear afterwards. And they'll even blend the material so you can have things that are kind of flexible and kind of rigid just by putting the liquid on top of each other and then curing it afterwards. It's super cool. But these technologies are held by only a few companies and they're very expensive to get. And the materials for them, again, are controlled, so they're also very expensive. This is probably not the sort of thing that you're going to see in your home, but it is a very cool 3D printing technology, and the people who are doing neat things with it are doing amazing things. There's binder jetting. The idea is you have a reservoir of material that you lay down a very thin layer. It's a dust, and you just lay down a dusty layer of the stuff and then you go over it with a binder that binds it together just like a inkjet printer that sprays out glue essentially. Now the cool thing about binder jet materials is these are the prints that can be full color. I mean full color. Imagine layers of paper where you can print whatever color you want. It's that degree of color in there, except in full 3D. And the other advantage to this technology is that you don't have to worry about supports because you're filling up your reservoir, your, your build area with each layer that supports are automatically held in place. You just have to, after the print is done, reach into that filled up reservoir of material and pull your print out of it. Now, there are some disadvantages to this technology. For one, it's very large. You need to have a reservoir as big as your build area next to your build area to empty that out and fill up your build area. Also, it's very messy with a lot of fine, dusty particulates all over the place. Not the sort of thing that you're going to have in your house. Binder jetting is, generally speaking, a more expensive 3D printing technology as well, mostly because the companies who are doing it, it's held by a few companies who still have control over the patents of them. So it's not likely that you're going to see a binder jetting material machine in your house anytime soon. Still, a very cool technology that can do things that other 3D printing technologies can't do. Powder jet fusion is basically the same idea as binder jetting, but it means that we're somehow taking that powdery substance that we're laying down and binding it to itself. Oftentimes they'll use a laser to bind metal to itself, just melting it into itself. This creates parts that are so strong and so usable that they use them on airplanes to keep people in the air. It's very industrial and very strong and very expensive. Also, the use of high-powered lasers is, well, again, you don't want to have that one in your home as much. A little bit expensive, but a solid 3D printing technology, a solid entry into the 3D printing technology. And the layers on both the binder jetting and the powder bat fusion are very thin, very high resolution prints. There's direct energy deposition, which is kind of a new technology, but it's basically... It's basically welding in 3D. Again, you, you take, instead of a filament of plastic like fused filament fabrication, you take a filament of metal and then you melt it as you go, building something in 3D. Now this is an amazing technology and the parts that come from this technology are very strong as well. However, they tend to be a little bit imprecise because of the nature of how they're being bound together and they tend to look rough and chunky. It's hard to do high detail with this technology. Although at the last CES there was a company that was using this technology to build the part and then after the layer was down they would come in and mill the edge of it to create it a nice smooth edge. So there is potential future for the direct energy deposition modeling process. So keep an eye on that one. And lastly, well lastly on the infographic anyways, is sheet lamination. This is literally laying down a piece of paper, cutting it out to the shape that you want with a cutter like a Cricut cutter, gluing, laying down some glue with an inkjet printer, laying down another piece of paper, cutting out that layer, glue, paper, cut, glue, paper, cut. Layer by layer, building up your print. Some of these sheet laminations actually include 
printing on the paper with an inkjet printer so that you can have a full color print. This creates prints that are absolutely beautiful. Paper thin layers and you don't have to worry about supports. When you're done, you just break it out of the paper and you've got your print there good to go. However, is a paper print really applicable and, and useful in a real world application? Well, it's not bad. At the end, the prints that come out of it feel like wood and there's no infill hollow prints like you get with FFF or other processes. It's a solid piece of, of layered wood, essentially. Uh, uh, think of particle board, but more color and, and uh, whatever shape you want it. So there's a lot of possibilities with sheet lamination. Again, the printers that do it are a little bit expensive. They're hard to get a hold of, but it's possible that this technology could make it into people's homes one day because it is fairly clean and fairly easy to use. And if the price comes down on it, who knows? So there we go. There's all the 3D printing technologies, well, that are on this infographic anyways. Who knows what the future will hold? There's always a different way to do 3D printing. I'm going to be talking most about these kinds of printers because it's what I have and it's probably the one that you're going to see. But I want you to know that there are other technologies out there. But this is just a few of them. It's definitely the majority of them that are out right now. As always, there's more information about this discussion on the blog, so be sure to follow along with that and follow the link. As always, I thank you very much for watching. Safety first, and I'll see you next time. I want to thank my friends at 3D Hubs for putting this together. Seriously? Seriously. Did it stop?